introductory video to YouTube was completed. Somehow I was able to download it, process it, put it on YouTube, and actually today I've got about 45 or 50 views, which is uh, pretty good. It's not exactly a viral sensation, but I'm happy with it. So today, if you thought the, uh, the first video could be a little bit boring, today is going to be a real humdinger. However, I do have to go through this introductory process. Now in that first video, I kindly stated my objectives, told you who I was, and defined uh, my goal in the, in the procedure. I next went over the first basic piece of equipment, which was the uh, Garrett AT Pro. Now, associated with metal detecting, there are a number of accessories. It seems like the accessories can keep on going on and on. So in this second introduction, that's introduction number two, I'm going to um, uh, show you the accessories that I use and give you some a few comments about them. Now, together with metal detecting, you ha you're going to get into what do you want to use to dig with. Well, you can go down to Walmart or whatever and buy your shovel. A good sharpshooter probably costs you 40 bucks, but me, I want to go to something uh, <laughs> like this. This is the uh, uh, Leshy, I think, what is that, the um, Model 35 or something like this. This is a monster. This thing with those blades on it will do a number on the roots. It won't, uh, I haven't seen any uh, situation where I put any stress that actually uh, break it or anything like this. Um, this is an awesome tool when you're going out there and have to cut through a uh, three-quarter inch root or knock the rocks out of the way or a wedge or a stone out of the ground or something like this. I would totally uh, support this Lecce uh, digging shovel. Of course, if you don't want to spend the money, you know, buy your, buy your uh, uh, sharpshooter. But long term the value of it you're not going to break this machine right here and but although it does cost you know like a hundred some like a hundred ten maybe or something like that it's a it's an awesome machine awesome tool anyway but I'm raven I mean it's an awesome little tool cost around eighty ninety dollars or something like that and it is absolutely perfect for uh, digging holes in the yards this curved blade here uh, digs a uh, small uh, sod sample that you can take out if you can get it correctly pinpointed and will decrease the amount of damage that you do to your yard. It's also extremely sturdy. I've used it a number of times and I can't say anything about this uh, tool. Um, so those are my two shovels or dig two primary digging tools that I use. So One is the uh, Piranha which is like I said before just an awesome tool and this little tool right here which also has the cutting blades on it which is excellent for um, a smaller plug dealing and dealing mainly with uh, areas that I don't want to disturb that much. Okay, let's take a look at uh, my pin pointer. Well, you know what that is, that's the uh, Garrett pin pointer. I've used it and I can't say anything uh, bad about it. I mean, I, I, I love this little tool. It's, it works efficiently. Um, I wish that it had a uh, battery meter on it so I know exactly what strength the battery is at and how much battery power it had in it, but it doesn't have that. But uh, it works extremely well. After you uh, take a plug out, uh, search your uh, uh, hole in your plug and you'll find uh, your target. I will say that um, it doesn't work very good in uh, water. As a matter of fact, it's not. I don't think it was made to uh, work in water. I've tried using the water and it goes crazy when it gets wet. So if I had to do it over, maybe I would go with that AT, or no, the uh, uh, Garrett uh, Gold, which is an all-terrain uh, detector. But I don't know uh, how well it would work in salt water, uh, being that you cannot uh, ground proof it. Uh, but I assume it works just fine. But this is the one I use and I'm happy with it. I also have the uh, Vulcan 360 that came to me free from uh, Kelico. I don't use it. I let Armando use that. I do know that I've uh, played around with it a little bit and I don't appreciate that a four second delay on coming on. But um, that's where I'm at with the uh, pinpointer. It costs about $100 and it's well worth it. But uh, 
there may be other ones out there that are just as good as this, but uh, for something that you guaranteed is pretty good, you can't beat that uh, pinpointer. Oh my gosh, I went out and got a sand scoop. Whoops. Short handled sand scoop. Yes, indeed. Beachmaster 16 hand scoop. Okay. I haven't used it yet. The searching that I've done on the beach, I've just used a, a little hand uh, scoop, and that's worked just as well. But once I get into the water, then I'm going to have to use this thing right here, and hopefully if I can get the uh, object, uh, the target pinpointed correctly, this will come in extremely handy. But I cannot uh, say anything about it one way or the other, uh, but it should work just fine. Now, if I had to do over, I would get one with a longer handle, because this requires you, uh, you know, bending over and kneeling down too much, and I don't... <laughs> I don't I can kind of get tired of that right there. But anyway, that's a little sand scoop. <clears throat> when I first started, I went down to uh, Home Depot and bought me a little wooden pick. Within 30 minutes, I uh, paid, I don't know, 12 bucks for it. <clears throat> I broke it within 30 minutes. So I went out and got this uh, beauty right here, and I haven't used it since, simply because I've... Um, I uh, started using the shovels, and I have no need for the pick, but I've got a pick. Where would you use this at? I think you'd have to use it where you get into rocky ground, or very hard compacted clay, something to uh, get through that type of material. But since I'm not in that type of hard rocky condition or whatever, um, I haven't been, uh, had a nece uh, necessity to use it yet, but uh, I may end up being a favorite too. Uh, it's a good brand steel. I, can, I would uh, put a little edge on the blades here to make them a little bit sharper, end up cutting my toe or something with it, but uh, I'd probably uh, put a, uh, an edge on those blades myself. Oh, here we go. There's one of my primary tools right there. Uh, yes, indeed. It's got the little cutting blades on the side, and I think that's called a gator digger. <laughs> hey, you know, you can get these... Uh, something similar to this out of uh, Home Depot or other Walmart or whatever, but really um, uh, that, that's something that's going to last and uh, you can put an edge on it again, which I do. Can't really put an edge on the uh, cutting parts of it that well, but the front end of it you can put an edge on it and uh, I certainly plan to do that. Now you can go down and buy something like this right here, which is pretty good. That uh, cost me about $12, $15 out of uh, Sears Craftsman Tool. Stainless steel, they say, but I tried to put a uh, edge on this stainless steel, and it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't put an edge very well at all. But for the beach and for a lot of situations, this is all you need. But if you want the real thing, then you go to something with that uh, high quality steel uh, that's made for the purpose. And the design of it, the shape of the uh, tool is better, and so forth. But for most purposes, uh, something like that will work just fine. Then, because I went through Kelly Pro, you get a little bag like this. Okay, that bag is not the best bag in the world. It's okay. What do I have in here? Oh, got a uh, the brass part of a shotgun shell still stuck in there from one of my episodes. Has a little um, zip up thing here. I keep my batteries in that. The only complaint I have about this is it's just not big enough. I want something that's just about two inches bigger here, or two inches wider, and two inches longer. I would get that, uh, but I don't know exactly where to find it at, but for now I've got this and I'm uh, happy with it, and I will be happy with it. The, um, the only thing that I can say that's really needed in this, on, on my, uh, you know, my accessories here, is a belt that uh, you can tighten up on you that you can use to attach not only your, uh, your little digging shovel, but your uh, scoop, your pin pointer, maybe your camcorder, and all other accessories on one belt. And I don't have that in this thing right here. This belt's not quite strong enough for that. So maybe if I go down to a home uh, to an army surplus place or to a builder supply place, I can find that belt. But if uh, one of these uh, companies that build accessories, uh, Garrett or whoever, uh, would come out with a, uh, a better quality uh, pouch than this one.
this right here, I would certainly be willing to get it. But I'd want something that left you, uh, the user, the ability to uh, attach their stuff to. So you'd have holes in it, maybe metal holes in it, and uh, rivets or whatever you call them in there to attach uh, your accessories to it. So I think that is just about all of the accessories that I have, and I just wanted to run through them just to let you know what kind of material go, materials go into this. Once you get into it, though, if like me, then you want to get a camcorder to kind of take pictures of yourself. So uh, I went out and uh, actually made a deal with the Best Buy when I was buying a Mac Air book, Mac, MacBook Air, yeah, and got a, uh, a free uh, camcorder. That's, that's what this I'm um, looking at right now, R600, which I think is an ideal type of machine. I will then uh, transfer the uh, uh, MP4 files from here to my back MacBook and edit the file with the uh, editor iMovies. I don't know how to use iMovies yet, but before this is over with, by the time I uh, submit this video, I will know how to do some basic editing with the uh, iMovie software. It shouldn't be too hard. Everything is really hard, but then they have a simple stuff that I kind of like to use. The last thing I'd like to say on this is that metal detecting, you have a concept of what a metal detecting is. It's some kind of little old guy with a Bermuda shorts on, uh, little skinny legs walking down the beach. Uh, well, that looks awful simple, and that may actually happen. But if you really get into metal detecting, well, guess what? It can be a strenuous exercise and giving activity. You get yourself caught up in some woods and dig a hole <laughs> full of rocks, laced with roots, uh, compacted clay soil, and dig for 15 minutes on a target that you think looks promising, you hit it, you think it's going to be a metal box full of uh, uh, 18, 60, uh, $20 gold pieces, and actually by the time you pull it out, it's a, uh, the uh, blade part of a shovel, which I've done that. <laughs> uh, it will take your, your energy from you. And if you spend four hours out there, you're going to get some energy. So if any of your kids or anything want to get into metal detecting and want a good exercise and get away from their iPhones or whatever, then metal detecting is certainly a great little hobby to deal with. So with that, I'm going to end this introductory video and uh, look, get started to uh, putting together my next one. I already know what the topic's going to be. I want to show you right here very quickly my first treasure find that I found totally by accident. Let me see if I can go in on that. Oh, yes. All right, there's the front of it. And there's the back of it. First of all, on the back. I didn't know what it was when I found it, and I kept on investigating back and forth, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. Uh, knowledgeable people can figure it out pretty easily, but I will say that it does not have three, or does not have the uh, puppy toe latches on the back, or a front latch. It has two latches that were stainless steel originally, and then those are gone. But on the front of it, I have a very nice uh, patina with no scars. So, <laughs> you can tell me what you think it is, and next week I'm going to tell you how I found this thing. Alright, goodbye for now. I got a star on